themselves and others by what they do. That's what he's talking about there. And that's what's we're happening today. So we have for these people then remain immune to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Even the truth of the light of God's truth won't expose them, even when it's brought to bear upon their sinful ways. See, in ages, to, from ages past to our present day, people have been presented with this distorted gospel in this artificial image of Jesus Christ. This love and tolerance and everything's going to be okay and God loves you the way you are and it doesn't matter what you do. And all things are acceptable to Him and there's no real distinction between good and evil or darkness and light. And again, the prophets cry out the same as John the Baptist cried out. You snakes and you vipers bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Your pastor says you can't bring forth fruit worthy of repentance because that would be works. That'd be saving yourself. But that's the message Christ and John the Baptist both preached and the disciples in the book of Acts. You know, woe to you who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's what Isaiah said in chapter 5, verse 20, and many other things. And that's exactly what they're doing by suppressing the truth and unrighteousness as our theme has been in our last few lessons. Instead of oppressing the people in the Western worlds, they're suppressing them in the unrighteous message that they preach. See, because they control the platforms, and they're not willing to draw a line in the sand between good and evil, right and wrong, darkness and light. They won't make the distinctions that if you do these things listed in the scriptures in idolatry and fornication and filthiness, you will not inherit the kingdom. They won't draw that distinction because they won't want to offend anybody. See, they are incapable of making a righteous judgment in any matter when it comes to morality or human decency. They can't do it because everything's subject to their false doctrines. See, while they pose for holy preachers under a pretense of authority, and then they wade in the muck of their lives, and then they receive the degenerating fruit of their own doings, like you eat the fruit of lies, as the prophets say. But the reward is too appealing for these people to break out of their delusion and come clean with God. It's, it's just, it's just much, way too much to count the cost. So they go about deceiving and being deceived, and the corruption comes as they deserve, as you reap what you sow. See, the pseudo-Christian world, see, there awaits the, revival, the arrival of an antichrist to signal the rapture, this phony rapture business that uh, is coming about upon the people. But instead of that, it's going to be darkness and shame. See, so the vast majority of mankind then worships the dragon in its many forms. See, most people remain in this trance that has so altered their will and their ability to reason that they follow sheep-like, like sheeple, you've heard that term before, after anybody who tickles their fancy with some smooth-sounding words and fables and myths that lets them live the way they want to live. See, here's where the image of the beast comes into play and how he's able then to so easily deceive the whole world. One man's not going to deceive the whole world as you've been falsely taught in your movies and books and all that other stuff, just merchandised to get your money. See, he's going to deceive what? By false signs and wonders, right? Is what it says in the, in the Revelation 13. What's he going to do? Is he going to, some guy's going to come along and he's going to implant a chip into everybody's brain? Will that deceive him? Or will giving everybody what they want deceive them? Isn't that exactly what they've done? They tickle your ears with all this nonsense and give you what you want to hear? That's how it's done. See, in the political realm, they promise people health, wealth, and prosperity. Vote for me. Cradle to grave protection, security. While well, they're going to bury you in your own in your own slime because they're going to take it all. 
then through this army of false teachers in the Christian arena, so-called Christian arena, you have the promises that you can sin and not die. So there you have the best of both worlds. You have a system of strong delusion that reduces your humanity to a state of servile uh, servitude in which you can no longer discern what's real and what's not real. So although people march to a different beat, everybody marches to their own drum, of course. It's all part of the same system that Revelation 18 collectivizes in the mystery Babylon. It's all part of that system. See, all the nations of the earth have taken part in this deception and committed adultery with the woman on the scarlet beast, right? Is, uh, it represented that image in Revelation. She represents the image as it appears to each and every individual person, regardless of their religious preference, who worships it. That's how the dragons deceives the entire world with his signs and wonders. Through that image, through that mirrored reflection of what they want to see and what they want to receive, whether it's violence and death or whether it's phony tolerance and love that brings no one out of their corruption. So the world perishes as mystery Babylon and all goes down in flames in the end. See, within the church system, the dragon uses his army of false teachers to persuade you of original sin and moral depravity, human inability, substitution, and moral transfer, and all the rest of it. That's what he does. Consequently, then, you have necessitated through that a system of error that explains away and disseminates everything in the scriptures so that it doesn't apply to you. It's not applicable to your life. So the pundits, as I said, they're rewarded handsomely for their efforts to keep the people in their mesmerized state where there are no threat. That's why we can't dwell among, we can't buy or sell among these people because they're not going to allow us to come in there and preach this message while they're all so fat, dumb, and happy with the, with the message of substitution and moral depravity that they don't have to do nothing. They're not going to hear us. And they're going to cast us out as evil judges. So they handle the word of God deceitfully and suppress the truth and unrighteousness, as the scriptures so rightly say. The world loves to have it that way, and the overall demonic agenda rolls on and on with no one's the wiser. And they all serve it in the capacity they wish to serve it, and thinking that they're going to win in the end. Luke 6, 26, and Jesus said, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for, for the, uh, they did of the false prophets. For their fathers did of the false prophets. What's the pastors and the church pundits, are they spoke evil love? No, they're spoke well of. They're loved. They're bowed to. Because they're, they're the most friendly guy around. The wolf in sheep's clothing that's leading you down the wide road to destruction while you worship the image of the beast, thinking that you got this all figured out and the rapture's coming. See, the majority of mankind is unknowingly involved in a spiritual warfare that's so extremely deep and sinister at this psychological level that they don't have a clue what's going on. See, they operate in their own strength and their own wisdom, believing that they have the situation well in hand, like 1 Corinthians chapter 1 talks about the wisdom of man. And then they eat the fruit of lies and trust in the words of their mighty men. As Hosea talks about that in chapter 10. See, to them the preaching of the cross in the manner of repentance and faith proven by deeds, that you have to actually put forth some effort, that's foolishness to them. Their premise is from a universal concept that God accepts man in his present condition no matter what he is, or how far he's fallen in the depths of depravity, if he just repeats some words or acknowledges Jesus. Since man has no real choice to begin with, he was thrust into this world uh, either uh, mentally or morally or physically depraved in some manner, so he's told that he's incapable of any righteous act or doing anything pleasing to God, so naturally he follows his base instincts in the vices of lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Naturally, he follows the beast. Because that's what he's been told for thousands of years by every missionary that's walked this earth almost. Very few exceptions. 
where they've actually told man, obey God, because you have a choice, unhindered choice. Even the, the repentance preachers out on the streets, they don't believe man has an unhindered choice to turn from their sins. They still think he's hindered by some, he's something that has to be offset magically by the Holy Spirit. And that, of course, then alters the message of repentance, and you repent after you get saved, if, if at all. You know, there's this thought that, that this uh, transhumanism, that man can actually transfer his consciousness into some database or some massive computer bank and then achieve a virtual existence through that. There's, there's talk of this through many of the large uh, billionaires and pundits today. But yet, even if he could do that, even if he could achieve that, let's say, theoretically, he'd still remain a slave to the passions and desires of his flesh that were hardwired into his brain by the choices that he made to serve his corruption to begin with. By nature, children of wrath, what did I say? By nature, physis, through growth and development, you became a slave to whom you obey. So that would be part of the setup here. You have a bunch of... Bunch of brains loaded into a computer bank battling one another 